List of New England Hurricanes A New England hurricane is a tropical cyclone originating in the Atlantic Ocean that affects the states of Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, or Maine in the United States. List of tropical cyclones Most of the following are tropical cyclones that passed through the states after weakening from their peak. Pre-17th century Multiple intense hurricanes category 3 plus hit New England in pre-Columbian times between 1100 and 1150, 1300, 1400, 1295, 1407, and 1400, 1450, 1404, 1446, respectively. 17th century. August 25, 1635, the great colonial hurricane struck Narragansett Bay, killing at least 46 people. This hurricane is often considered to be the most intense hurricane to hit New England since its European colonization. The only other storm of a similar magnitude was the 1938 hurricane. August 23, 1683, a tropical cyclone hit Connecticut and caused tremendous flooding. October 29, 1693, another tropical cyclone struck New England and caused flooding so great that new permanent inlets were created. 18th century. October 18, 1703, a tropical system caused great wind and flood damage. Many ships were lost. February 23, 1723, an off-season storm struck Cape Cod causing a great deal of damage, but no reported deaths. October 8, 1747, seven ships were destroyed and many perished. September 8, 1769, a hurricane that earlier caused great damage in Annapolis, Maryland, blew ashore boats at Boston and adjacent areas, Providence and Newport. Some houses were blown down and destroyed. September 1775, the Newfoundland hurricane apparently brought strong winds and slash or waves to New England. This report may also be confused with the Independence hurricane of September 2, 3, 1775, which passed into New England from New York as a tropical depression or weak tropical storm. August 13, 1778, a weakening hurricane that struck the Carolinas and impacted the coasts of Massachusetts and Rhode Island, but did not make landfall. This storm prevented a major battle between England and France off the coast of Rhode Island. November 1, 1778, a possible late-season hurricane struck Cape Cod, Massachusetts, killing between 50 and 70 people. Twenty-three of these deaths are believed to be attributed to HMS Somerset Roman III, a British ship which ran aground on Cape Cod during this storm. October 8, 9, 1782, a hurricane struck the Carolinas and moved up the coast, causing damage in Providence, Rhode Island. It is currently not known if this hurricane made landfall in New England. October 18, 19, 1782, a second hurricane moved up the coast and was considered more severe than the previous storm in portions of New England, especially Boston. This was a rare snow hurricane for New England, and the storm was likely transforming into an extratropical cyclone as it approached the New England states. September 24-25, 1785, a hurricane which made landfall near Ocracoke, North Carolina, impacted southern New England. Based on known observations, this hurricane remained offshore of New England, but passed close enough to inflict heavy rain and strong winds to New York City and Boston. August 19, 1788, a weakening hurricane moved up through eastern New York, impacting western New England. 19th century. September 12, 1804, the Antigua-Charleston hurricane, a major storm for the Caribbean, Georgia, and South Carolina, impacted portions of New England as a weakening tropical storm and then a tropical depression before dissipating off the coast of Nova Scotia. 
October 9, 1804, as the snow hurricane crossed New England, cool air became entrained in the circulation, and it became extratropical. The storm brought heavy snow across the northeast, in some areas up to 2, 3 feet 61, 91 cm, and killed a total of 16 people, one on land and 15 at sea. This was the second observation of snow from a landfalling hurricane, not the last. This hurricane, which peaked at Category 3 intensity, was a major one, especially for eastern Massachusetts. October 3, 1805, a hurricane that struck Mantanzas, Cuba reportedly reached the main territory part of Massachusetts till 1820 as a tropical cyclone. Little information is available on this storm, however, a tropical cyclone exclusively striking Maine is not unique. This is what occurred during the passage of both Hurricane Jerda in 1969 and Tropical Storm Heidi in 1971. September 1815, what was once a major hurricane in the Carolinas brought tropical storm force winds to portions of New England. The likely track of this cyclone takes it very near but offshore of Nantucket. September 23, 24, 1815, the 1815 New England hurricane struck New England as a major hurricane and delivered an 11-foot high 3. 4 M storm surge that funneled up Narragansett Bay. The hurricane destroyed some 500 houses and 35 ships and flooded Providence, Rhode Island. It also caused at least 38 deaths throughout New England. August 12, 1817, a hurricane that was first reported near Tobago made landfall on the Florida Panhandle moved slowly up the coast. As either a weak tropical storm or tropical depression, the system brought rain to New York and portions of New England on the 12th before moving into Quebec. September 4, 1821, the Norfolk and Long Island hurricane was a very powerful tropical cyclone that made landfall within the modern-day limits of New York City. It sliced through New England and was likely extra-tropical as it moved along the main coastline. June 4, 5, 1825, an early-season hurricane formed in late May near Santo Domingo and later struck Cuba, Florida, and South Carolina before moving up the mid-Atlantic coast and into New England. Hurricane conditions were reported as far north as New York City, and the cyclone's status as a tropical cyclone in New England is debatable given the early date. August 27, 1827, the St. Kitts hurricane impacted the eastern seaboard from Wilmington, North Carolina, to Portsmouth, New Hampshire. It is possible that this cyclone made landfall along the United States, but there are also conflicting reports that say it remained offshore of Cape Hatteras, Delaware, and Nantucket. August 1827 was a very active month with at least four hurricanes impacting the North Atlantic. August 1832 hurricanes passed close to southeastern Massachusetts within a week of each other. First came the Atlantic Coast hurricane on August 19, followed by a second hurricane around the 25th. Damage from these two systems was duly noted on Nantucket. It appears that the later system approached the region from the southeast before turning out to sea southeast of Cape Cod. October 11, 1830, a third hurricane impacted New England in 1830, but like the two in August, this cyclone did not make landfall in New England. Barnstable, Massachusetts, reported the storm. July 19, 1835, the remnants of a hurricane that struck Florida twice moved into northern New England from New York. August 30, 1839, a hurricane moved up the east coast but did not make landfall. Fringe effects were felt on Long Island and southeastern New England. October 3, 1841, the October gale became an extratropical storm and passed off the coast of New England. The system dropped snow and sleet in Connecticut, 
bringing up to 18 inches 46 cm of snow in some areas. The storm wrecked the Georgia's bank fishing fleet, which drowned 81 fishermen and knocked down trees, tore roofs off houses and forced boats to go up on shore. The storm also destroyed a saltworks factory along Cape Cod, sending the economy to a slump. In 1842, a monument was erected to remember the sailors and fishermen lost at sea. October 14, 1846, the Great Havana Hurricane was still a strong tropical cyclone when it passed into New England from New York. In Hartford, Connecticut hurricane force winds destroyed a trestle bridge. Numerous apple orchards in Massachusetts were reported ruined. No deaths due to the hurricane's passage over New England were reported. October 6, 1849, a tropical cyclone made landfall in Massachusetts, causing 143 deaths. This was the first known tropical cyclone known to have made landfall in New England since June 1825. 1853 tropical cyclones impacted New England this season. The remnants of a July hurricane in the Carolinas passed into New England. An August hurricane caused damage in its wake through New England but was probably a tropical storm. Finally, a September hurricane passed off the coast causing some damage. October 19, 1851, a tropical storm formed north of the Bahamas on October 16. It continued northward and reached a peak intensity of 70 mph 113 km slash h. But it weakened to a 60 mph 97 km slash h storm before making landfall in Rhode Island on the 19th. Later that day, it dissipated on the border between Rhode Island and Massachusetts. September 16, 1858, a Category 1 hurricane made landfall on the Connecticut-Rhode Island border and brought heavy rain to New England before exiting Maine as a tropical storm. It then continued northeast until it dissipated just over the other side of the Gulf of St. Lawrence on the 17th. September 28, 1861, the equinoctial storm hit Connecticut as a 60 mph 97 km slash h tropical storm. It then continued east-northeast and dissipated in extreme eastern Maine later that day. November 3, 1861, the expedition hurricane struck eastern Connecticut as a 60 mph 97 km slash h tropical storm. It then continued northeast until dissipating over southern Maine later that day. September 19, 1863, a tropical storm makes landfall in New York and brings strong winds to western New England. October 30, 1866, a tropical storm made landfall in New Jersey, Long Island, and New York City and began to parallel the New York-New England border till it briefly enters Vermont and dissipates. September 8, 1869, a Category 3 hurricane made landfall in Rhode Island, before moving north and dissipating in Maine. There was one confirmed death in Massachusetts. Offshore Maine, a schooner capsized, killing all but one of the 12 crew. The storm also caused at least fifty thousand dollars eighteen sixty nine USD in damage in Maine alone. October four, eighteen sixty nine, the Saxby Gale crossed Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard as a Category two hurricane, before striking Maine as a Category one hurricane. In Maine, heavy rainfall caused widespread flooding, and high winds destroyed at least ninety houses. A very high storm tide also occurred in the Bay of Fundy, and the storm killed at least 37 people offshore of Nova Scotia. October 9, 13, 1878, a Category 1 hurricane passes offshore, resulting in heavy rains and strong winds, causing 27 deaths. October 10, 1894, a Category 1 hurricane struck Connecticut. September 10, 1896, a Category 1 hurricane struck Massachusetts. 
September 24, 1897, a tropical storm hit Connecticut with maximum sustained winds of 50 mph 80 km slash h. It continued up through all the New England states except for Vermont. October 6, 1898, a hurricane came from the west and hit Maine as a tropical depression, then continued east into Atlantic Canada. November 1, 1899, a hurricane struck New England as a 50 mph 80 km slash h extratropical storm. 20th century. August 1904, an extratropical storm with hurricane force winds left behind damage in southeastern Massachusetts, especially Martha's Vineyard. Trees were downed in Providence, Rhode Island, and New Bedford, Massachusetts. Center moved any just within the coastline from Carolinas, with its eastern sector intact over ocean. The storm then tracked across Long Island and eastern Rhode Island. Much marine destruction with heavy losses in Buzzards Bay, Vineyard Sound, and Massachusetts Bay. July 21, 1916, a Category 1 hurricane moved north from open Atlantic, crossing the Buzzards Bay slash Cape Cod area of Massachusetts. Hourly wind reports indicated sustained 50 mph 80 km slash h, but actual winds were higher than hourly observations. Gusts of 85 mph 137 km slash h recorded in southeast Massachusetts and Cape Cod. August 1917, a tropical storm sank four ships while passing offshore of Nantucket, Massachusetts, killing 41 sailors. The storm later made landfall in New Brunswick before becoming post-tropical. August 1924, a Category 1 hurricane with a large center moved over and just east of Cape Cod. It was a severe hurricane in New Bedford, and Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. New Bedford newspaper Mercury published photo journal of the hurricane's severity. The system is often overlooked, however much material is present, included as destructive storm. On Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket, it is often considered worse than the 1938 hurricane. Widespread wind losses to structures were reported. Very heavy tree damage in New Bedford, north to Plymouth, Massachusetts. The storm was later destructive in Nova Scotia. November 3, 4, 1927, the remnants of a tropical storm spawned torrential rains as it passed over the Green Mountains in Vermont. The record flooding caused $40 million in damage and killed 84 people in Vermont and one in Rhode Island. The storm ended as snow in the mountains. Note that this flood was unrelated to the 1927 Mississippi flood. September 9, 1934, a strong tropical storm crossed Long Island and lost strength from slow movement as it moved through Connecticut much in a similar manner as Hurricane Bell of August 1976. Trees downed in Providence, Rhode Island, and New Haven, Con. September 1936, a Category 1 hurricane moved east-northeast over Block Island and Nantucket Sounds after moving up east coast of U.S. north of North Carolina and Virginia. The storm was destructive in Providence, Rhode Island, and eastern Massachusetts. Boston had 80 mph 129 km slash h winds at 8 a.m. on the 18th as the storm moved east along the south coast of Cape Cod and the islands. There was much media coverage, but this storm was later eclipsed by the extreme hurricane two years later. Heavy wind damage was realized across all of eastern Massachusetts. September 21, 1938, 1938, New England hurricane. This storm made landfall on Long Island and Connecticut as a Category 3 hurricane. Wind gusts reached Category 5 strength in eastern Connecticut, Rhode Island, and southern Massachusetts west of Buzzards Bay and Cape Cod. The anemometer at the Blue Hill Observatory registered a peak wind gust of 186 mph 299 km slash h before the instrument broke. 
A hurricane lost strength as it tracked into interior areas of New England. The storm killed over 600 people and is considered to be the worst hurricane to strike New England in modern times. September 15, 1944, the Great Atlantic Hurricane made landfall near the Connecticut slash Rhode Island border as a Category 1 hurricane, causing severe wind damage in southeastern Massachusetts and across the Cape and Islands. Damage on Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard was considered worse than that in 1938, with severe wind damage in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Much structural damage and much of the forest that had somehow escaped being decimated in 1938 fell victim to this storm. A total of 28 people died in New England due to the hurricane. September 1950 Hurricane Dog was a major offshore hurricane that moved very close to Nantucket. Hurricane conditions occurred across southeast Massachusetts. Winds gusted near hurricane force on Nantucket and along the New England coast. September 7, 1953, Hurricane Carol made landfall near St. John, New Brunswick, Canada, with considerable wind losses throughout the region. This hurricane was eclipsed by the extreme damage of another Carol the very next year. August 31, 1954, Hurricane Carol made landfall as a Category 3 hurricane with gusts of Category 4 strength in southeast Rhode Island and south coastal Massachusetts in the Buzzards Bay area, west of Cape Cod. Wind gusts of 135 mph 217 km slash h at Block Island, Rhode Island, and 125 mph 201 km slash h in Milton, Massachusetts, were recorded. At least 68 people were killed across New England. Extreme damage was reported in south coastal Rhode Island and south coastal Massachusetts. Damage in the Buzzards Bay region rivaled that of the 1938 hurricane. September 11, 1954, Hurricane Edna made landfall on Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard as a strong Category 2 hurricane just two weeks after Carol, with very severe losses occurring. Hourly wind readings of 90 mph 145 km slash h were recorded at New Bedford Airport in New Bedford, Massachusetts, 100 mph 161 km slash h in Taunton, Massachusetts, 112 mph 180 km slash h in Milton, Massachusetts, and 125 mph 201 km slash h in Chilmark, Martha's Vineyard. July 11, 1959, Hurricane Cindy Scrapes New England. September 12, 13, 1960, Hurricane Donna makes landfall on Long Island, New York, as a minimal Category 2 hurricane, and in Connecticut as a strong Category 1 hurricane. Peak wind gusts of 140 mph 225 km slash h at the Blue Hill Observatory in Massachusetts, and 135 mph 217 km slash h on Block Island, Rhode Island. Hourly peak wind gusts at New Bedford Airport in Massachusetts recorded 110 mph 177 km slash h winds from the south-southwest in a sheltered area. Heavy tree utility and structural damage was observed in southeastern Massachusetts, coastal New Hampshire and Maine. Donna was the sixth hurricane to hit southern New England in 30 years. Hourly wind speed readings at City Hall in downtown New Bedford, Massachusetts recorded 80 mph 129 km h winds. September 26, 1961 Hurricane Esther moved within 35 miles of the south coast of Rhode Island and Massachusetts as a Category 1 hurricane, before subsequently making a sharp right turn and then making a loop, returning as a tropical storm five days later. Esther remained offshore, but produced hurricane force wind gusts from Block Island, Rhode Island, eastward across Cape Cod, Massachusetts, 
Nantucket, and Martha's Vineyard. There was less damage than in Hurricane Donna one year prior. Wind gusts of 75 mph 121 km h to 90 mph 145 km h occurred on shore. October 7, 8, 1962 Hurricane Daisy remained offshore, but produced hurricane conditions in coastal northeastern Maine and on MT. Desert Island. October 29, 1963 Hurricane Ginny remained offshore, but produced hurricane conditions in Nantucket, Massachusetts, and along coastal northeastern Maine. September 8, 11, 1969, Hurricane Jurda brushed Cape Cod and made landfall at Eastport, Maine. No people were killed, though the storm was one of the strongest to hit Maine. August 28, 1971, Tropical Storm Doria moved into Connecticut after crossing Long Island. Hurricane force winds were measured at sea level in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Wind gusts up to 80 mph 129 km/h in southeastern Massachusetts and Blue Hill Observatory. September 3, 1972, tropical storm Carrie passed offshore of Cape Cod as a tropical storm producing hurricane force wind gusts of 90 mph 145 km/h in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and 100 mph 160 km/h in Hyannis, Massachusetts. August 10, 1976, Hurricane Bells, rather slow movement enabled weakening to set in as the storm approached Long Island, New York, and then moved into Connecticut and Massachusetts before transversing the Vermont-slash-New Hampshire border. Wind gusts up to 90 mph 145 km/h were observed in southern Connecticut, 60 mph 97 km/h in Providence, Rhode Island, and 75 mph 121 km/h in Newport, Rhode Island. September 27, 1985, Hurricane Gloria crosses Long Island and Connecticut as a Category 1 hurricane, making it the first hurricane of significant strength to hit southern New England since 1960. Widespread wind damage was reported in Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts, and later across coastal New Hampshire and Maine. The tree damage in Connecticut was the worst since the 1938 hurricane, and wind losses in Rhode Island and eastern Massachusetts were considerable to trees, utilities, and roofs. New Bedford, Massachusetts, reported wind gusts over 90 mph 145 km/h, and in Rehoboth, winds at the T.F. Green Airport in Warwick, Rhode Island, gusted to 85 mph 137 km/h, and winds of 100 mph 161 km/h were recorded on east side of Providence, near Brown University. In addition, winds in New London, Connecticut, were clocked at 110 mph 177 km/h to 112 mph 180 km/h. Widespread forest damage occurred in Maine. Gloria also produced hurricane force wind gusts into New Brunswick, Canada. August 19, 1991, Hurricane Bob made landfall on Block Island, Rhode Island, and Newport, Rhode Island, as a Category 2 hurricane. Winds gusted to Category 3 strength in southeastern Massachusetts. Bob was one of the smallest in area and yet most intense hurricanes to hit southern New England. Storm surge in the Buzzards Bay area of Massachusetts was comparable to that of Hurricane Carroll. Bob was considered to be the worst storm in Martha's Vineyard since the 1944 hurricane. This hurricane was among the top 25 costliest U.S. hurricanes of 20th century. 1938 and 1944 hurricanes as well as Carroll in 1954, Donna in 1960, and Bob in 1991 are all on the list. A tidal surge of 10 feet 3. 
zero m above normal was recorded in upper reaches of buzzards bay a wind gust of 135 mph 217 km slash h was recorded at block island before the anemometer blew away a 125 mph 201 km slash hh wind gust was recorded in newport rhode island and a 5 minute sustained wind speed of 111 mph 179 km slash h with gusts to 144 mph 232 km slash h was observed at Westport Harbor on the south coastal border of southern Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Additional wind recordings include a 120 mph 193 km slash h gust at the Massachusetts Maritime Academy on Buzzards Bay and a 120 mph 193 km slash h gust in Truro, Massachusetts. A 1 minute sustained wind speed of 110 mph 177 km slash h was recorded on Chappaquiddick Island, Massachusetts. Several private anemometers in Falmouth, Massachusetts, on Cape Cod reported unofficial gusts of 150 mph 241 km slash h. New Bedford fishing boat off Cuttyhunk Island, Massachusetts, reported a peak gust of 162 mph 261 km slash h. October 30, November 1, 1991, the perfect storm remained offshore but produced wind gusts to 77 and pH 124 km slash H over Cape Cod, and as far west as Jamestown, Rhode Island. Coastal damage was very high in exposed eastern Massachusetts due to high waves and tidal surge. Minor wind damage came just two months after Hurricane Bob, which produced major damage over southeast Massachusetts. August 28, 1992, the remnants of Hurricane Andrew combined with a frontal boundary and moved from the mid-Atlantic states into New England. The system dropped light rain and produced light wind across the region. September 26, 1992, the remnants of Tropical Storm Daniel moved just west of New England, but caused rainy conditions throughout the region. July 13, 1996, Tropical Storm Bertha moved into southern New England as a strong tropical storm with 70 mph 113 km slash h sustained winds. And in some exposed areas, winds gusted to minimal hurricane force in southern Rhode Island and south coastal Massachusetts, west of Buzzards Bay. Overall, Bertha produced minor damage but notable damage in coastal Rhode Island. September 2, 1996, Hurricane Edward passed offshore as a Category 1 hurricane, producing strong wind gusts from Buzzards Bay eastward across Cape Cod and the islands of Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. On Cape Cod, Edward was a worse storm than Gloria in 1985, but not so destructive as Bob in 1991 which has become a benchmark hurricane on Cape Cod. Considerable losses occurred across Massachusetts, particularly in Oak Bluffs and Martha's Vineyard. October 8, 1996, the remnants of Tropical Storm Josephine brushed Cape Cod, dropping widespread light rain and wind gusts of 45 mph 72 km slash h to 60 mph 97 km slash h in New Bedford, Massachusetts. July 26, 1997 Tropical Storm Danny stalled just to the south of Nantucket, causing only minor damage, despite strong winds that were experienced in southeastern Massachusetts. The minor damage included minimal flooding, power outages, and downed tree limbs. September 17, 18, 1999, after paralleling much of the U.S. East Coast, Tropical Storm Floyd moved into Connecticut and tracked northward through Maine. Floyd caused large power outages and major flood damage across the region, with over 5 inches 13 cm of rain falling over most of the area. Danbury, Connecticut, 
received up to 15 inches 380 mm of rain from the storm, resulting in extensive flooding in the city surrounding areas. Mudslides were reported in the Berkshire Mountains of western Massachusetts. Several major highways and a countless number of local roads in Connecticut and Massachusetts were closed for several days due to flooding and downed trees and power lines. Hurricane force wind gusts were observed in southern Rhode Island. North Kingston unofficially reported wind gusts to 90 mph 145 km h. Wind gusts to 76 mph 122 km h were recorded at the New Bedford Hurricane Dyke in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and 73 mph 117 km h in Hyannis, Massachusetts. 21st Century June 17, 2001 Tropical Storm Allison brushed southern New England as a subtropical storm. In Connecticut, Rainfall peaked at 7. 2 inches 180 mm in Pomfret, closing several roads, causing minor damage to numerous houses. In Rhode Island, the rainfall washed out several roads. September 11, 2002 The interaction between Hurricane Gustav and the non-tropical system caused strong winds that affected areas of coastal New England, mainly in eastern New York and Massachusetts. The winds downed trees and power lines, and several homes and cars were damaged by falling trees. About 19,000 homes lost power in Massachusetts. September 2002, the remnants of Tropical Storm Hannah contributed to around 1 in 25 mm of rainfall in Vermont. September 28, 2002, the extratropical remnants of Hurricane Isidore produced widespread light rainfall across the region. No damage or flooding was reported. September 2003, Hurricane Fabian produced moderate surfing conditions along the east coast of the United States. September 4, 2003, the remnants of Tropical Storm Grace dropped light to moderate rainfall throughout the region though no significant damages were reported. September 17, 2003, the dissipating remnants of Tropical Storm Henry produced light rainfall. September 19, 2003, Hurricane Isabel passed far to the west, though rainfall reached 1 inch 25 mm in portions of western Connecticut and Massachusetts, and in portions of New Hampshire and Maine. Falling trees from moderate winds down power lines across the region, causing sporadic power outages. Two people died as a result of the hurricane, both due to the rough surf. Damage in Vermont totals about $100,000, 2003 USD, $117,000 in 2008 USD. October 2003, the interaction between Hurricane Kate and a high-pressure area to its north produced 3 to 4 foot 1M waves along the coast. August 14, 2004, the extratropical remnants of Tropical Storm Bonnie produced heavy rainfall, with localized totals of up to 10 inches 250 mm. The rainfall flooded or washed out roads across the eastern Maine. In Aroostook County, Maine, the rainfall caused a mudslide, narrowing a county road to one lane. August 15, 2004, Tropical Storm Charlie dissipated near southern Massachusetts, though the remnant moisture produced up to 5 in 130 mm of rainfall, particularly in Maine. In Rhode Island, one man drowned in a rip current generated by the system. August 31, 2004 moisture from Hurricane Gaston dropped up to 3. 69 in 94 mm of rainfall. August 31, 2004 tropical storm Herman comes ashore near New Bedford, Massachusetts as a minimal tropical storm. Damage was minimal and effects were limited to gusty winds and light rainfall. September 10, 2004, the remnants of Hurricane Francis produced light, yet widespread rainfall. The system eventually crossed northern Maine. 
September 19, 2004, a plume of moisture broke off from the remnants of Hurricane Ivan and progressed northward, producing heavy rainfall across portions of the Mid-Atlantic and New England. The rain caused extensive roadway flooding in Connecticut and resulted in minor river flooding in other areas. September 29, 2004, moisture from the remnants of Hurricane Jean Storm produced light and heavy rainfall, with totals of over 7 inches 180 mm on Nantucket. June 15, 2005, after being absorbed into a frontal wave, the remnants of Tropical Storm Arlene dropped light rainfall in northern New England. July 8, 2005, the extratropical remnants of Hurricane Cindy produced moderate rainfall in northern Vermont, generally within the range of 1 to 3 in 25 to 76 mm. August 31, 2005, the remnants of Hurricane Katrina dropped up to 4. 17 and 106 mm of rain and caused gusty winds that blew down trees and tree limbs, primarily across Vermont, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. September 17, 2005, Hurricane Ophelia brushed Massachusetts with gusty winds and heavy rainfall. October 7, 12, 2005, the remnants of Tropical Storm Tammy and Subtropical Depression 22, 2005 contributed to the Northeast U.S. flooding of October 2005, which killed 10 people and contributed to the wettest month on record in locations throughout the Northeastern United States. June 15, 2006, the extratropical remnants of Tropical Storm Alberto dropped rainfall throughout the region, peaking at 1. 98 in 50 mm at Windsor Locks, Connecticut. July 21, 2006, Tropical Storm Barrel makes landfall on Nantucket, generating waves 10 feet 3. 0 m in height as the storm approached the island. Light rainfall and gusty winds were also reported there, and in portions of Massachusetts. September 3, 2006, the extratropical remnants of Hurricane Ernesto dropped light rainfall. 1. 72 in 44 mm of precipitation was reported at Marlboro, Vermont. June 4, 2007, the extratropical remnants of Tropical Storm Barry entered the region, producing moderate rainfall that peaked at 3, 2 inches 81 mm at Taunton, Massachusetts. November 3, 2007, as a powerful extratropical storm, Hurricane Knoll hit coastal Massachusetts, Rhode Island and Maine with hurricane force wind gusts of up to 89 mph 143 km/h with sustained winds topping out at 59 mph 95 km slash h. Power outages were widespread, about 80,000 customers in Massachusetts, mostly on Cape Cod, and 9,000 in Maine lost electric power. Heavy rainfall, high seas, and coastal flooding also occurred. September 6, 2008 Tropical Storm Hannah made landfall at Myrtle Beach, September 15, 2008, the remnants of Hurricane Ike reached northern New England, though no effects were reported. September 28, 2008, Hurricane Kyle passed to the east as it heads towards Canada, affecting Maine with heavy rainfall and gusty winds that caused scattered power outages. Up to 7. 15 in 182 mm of precipitation falls in Hancock County, Maine. August 21, 2009, Hurricane Bill passed just offshore of New England, causing very heavy surf and a period of rain and gusty winds over southeastern Massachusetts. August 29, 2009, Tropical Storm Danny passes over Nantucket as an extratropical storm, causing up to 2 inches 51 mm of rain in Massachusetts and Rhode Island and bringing wind gusts up to 60 mph 97 km slash h off the coast of Nantucket and Maine. November 12, 2009 Hurricane Ida 
after hitting the northeast Gulf Coast as a tropical storm, redeveloped off the Carolina coast as a strong nor'easter. As the center of the storm moved out to sea, a batch of moisture broke off it and moved north, bringing moderate rain to New England. The storm caused millions of dollars in damage. September 4, 2010 Hurricane Earl passed about 90 miles offshore, but still brought heavy rain, large waves, and tropical storm force gusts to Cape Cod. The heaviest rain affected areas such as Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, and areas over Maine, while the strongest wind was a recorded gust of 58 mph 93 km/h near Hyannis, Massachusetts. Sustained winds were of 29 to 35 miles per hour, just at and below tropical storm force. August 28, 2011 Hurricane Irene weakened to a tropical storm just before its landfall in New York. Irene produced high winds, heavy rains, and flash flooding especially in western New England. The storm left at least 16 people dead throughout New England, including 10 deaths in Connecticut. The eastern quadrant of Irene remained intact, as that section had never transversed land and moved north-northeast across southern Bristol and Plymouth counties in Massachusetts. Winds at times reached hurricane force from Westport East to Woods Hole on the south coast. October 2930, 2012 Hurricane Sandy affected southern New England with its outer bands, producing heavy storm surge, winds, and rainfall before the storm's landfall in New Jersey. Sandy devastated the Jersey Shore, New York City, parts of Long Island, and the Connecticut and Rhode Island coastlines. Flooding and power outages, roughly 9 million customers total lasted several days, while thousands of trees, telephone poles, and traffic light stanchions were snapped. A total of approximately $71. Four billion in property damage was left in Sandy's wake after it made landfall and its center went over Pennsylvania and New York. Sandy killed five people in New England, four in Connecticut, and one in New Hampshire. To the west, Sandy dumped two four feet 61 122 cm of snow in the Appalachian Mountain region and flatlands. October 2, 5, 2015 Hurricane Joaquin, at one point forecast to make a landfall in New England, eventually passed offshore and produced high surf along Cape Cod and Nantucket. September 1922, 2017 Hurricane Jose stalled to the south of New England, meandering offshore for several days. This resulted in major rainfall and high winds throughout the region, particularly on Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket. Rainfall peaked at 6. 4 inches 160 mm on Nantucket and maximum sustained winds reached 53 mph 90 km slash h miles per hour in Cuttyhunk, with gusts up to 62 mph 100 km slash h recorded on Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. October 29, 30, 2017, the combination of Tropical Storm Philippe and an extratropical system resulted in approximately 1. 2 million power outages in New England. The system produced storm forced sustained winds, reaching 57 mph 90 km slash h in Warwick, Rhode Island, and hurricane force wind gusts, peaking at 93 mph 150 km slash h in Paponeset, Massachusetts. In addition, the system dropped several inches of rain, peaking at 5. 5 inches 140 mm in Canton, Connecticut. September 18, 2018, the remnants of Hurricane Florence passed through the region, resulting in gusty winds and heavy rainfall. A maximum of 7. 0 inches 180 mm of rainfall was recorded in Baldwinville, Massachusetts. October 12, 2018, the remnants of Hurricane Michael passed through southeastern Massachusetts, 
dropping 5 to 6 inches 130 to 150 mm of rainfall on Cape Cod. Early September 2019, Hurricane Dorian brushed Nantucket, Cape Cod, and Martha's Vineyard in eastern Massachusetts. It produced tropical storm force winds and light to moderate rain. The storm later brushed southeast Maine as it hit Nova Scotia. October 11, 13, 2019 Tropical Storm Melissa brought rainfall, coastal flooding, and strong swells to southeastern New England. July 9, 2020 Tropical Storm Faye made landfall on New Jersey and triggered multiple meteorological warnings for much of New England. August 4, 2020 Tropical Storm Isaias made landfall near North Carolina but maintained tropical storm strength well into New England, causing extensive power outages and tree damage, particularly in Connecticut. The storm became extratropical over Vermont. October 30, 2020 Post-Tropical Storm Zeta brought over half a foot of snow accumulation in parts of New England. Several injuries from crashes were also reported. Landfalls. A landfall in New England occurs only if the center of the storm comes ashore in Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, or Connecticut as they all share a coastline. Tropical cyclones that made landfall outside of New England, but subsequently passed through the region, are excluded from this category. For example, the 1893 New York Hurricane, Tropical Storm Doria of 1971, and Hurricane Irene of 2011 all made landfall in New York City, but failed to cross Long Island Sound and enter Connecticut along its coastline. In addition, other systems such as the 1876 San Felipe Hurricane, 1888 Louisiana Hurricane, 1893 Sea Islands Hurricane, and Hurricane Abel of 1952 all passed through New York, to the north of New York City, before entering New England. A landfall is also distinct from a direct hit, in which the eye wall, or core of the highest winds, comes on shore, without the center of the storm moving ashore. New England hurricanes have made landfall on many occasions. Normally, due to cold SST and high wind shear, Hurricanes do not last long, so the ones that do make landfall are normally weak, with major hurricanes Category 3 or higher being rare. The following tables are a list of all tropical cyclones that have made landfall in New England since records began in 1851. 19th century. The 19th century saw a few notable storms. In 1869, an intense Category 3 hurricane struck southeastern New England. Other hurricanes that made landfall include the Equinoctial Storm, Expedition Hurricane, and the Saxby Gale. Since hurricanes were not named and fewer records were kept at the time, the information on some of the storms remains incomplete. 20th Century the 20th century saw eight hurricanes making landfall in New England. Out of these, the more notable include the 1938 New England hurricane, also called the Long Island Express, which made landfall as a major hurricane. Hurricane Carol did the same 16 years later. The last hurricane to make landfall in New England was Hurricane Bob in 1991 as a Category 2 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 100 mph. 21st century. So far in the 21st century, three tropical cyclones have made landfall in New England. Tropical Storm Herman in 2004, which made landfall in southeastern Massachusetts. Tropical Storm Beryl in 2006, which made landfall in Nantucket, and Tropical Storm Hannah in 2008, which made landfall in Connecticut. All three storms caused minimal damage overall throughout the region. Deadliest Storms Some tropical cyclones that have impacted New England have resulted in fatalities in the region. 
The most notorious and deadly of these storms is the 1938 New England hurricane which killed between 682 and 800 people. This list includes all tropical cyclones that have resulted in at least 10 deaths in New England. Some storms may be excluded or their death toll may be inaccurate due to a lack of available data at the time.